Hello, I'm Grace Vandenberg. I'm too often asked how to start writing a book, so today I wanted to set out some of the basic starting points I use and have learned to use in my thirteen years in the industry. All of which I can attest have served me well. Write what you want to write is the first and foremost lesson you must learn. It's going to be impossible to invest yourself in a project if you're not emotionally involved in its course. When I was first published, I heard all these people who knew me, none of whom were happy for my success, say, "It's easy to write a book." None of them had written a book, never mind had one published, and many of them didn't even read books. But let a professional tell you and reassure you from the get-go, it's not easy to write a book. It's time and emotionally consuming. Writing, rewriting, and editing will take even more dedicated hours to tweaking this and that to make it commercially viable. To go into this project, realizing is a mammoth undertaking and commitment. Effectively, you're going to be married to your work for a long, long time if you so desire completion. To learn what techniques work for you will only be learned by actually writing. It's something that will develop naturally. What works for me might not work for you. Heck, to be honest, my writing process today wouldn't have worked for me when I was starting out. Why? Because I didn't really know what I was doing. I just had this inner voice yelling to get out, and for me to release it. So I listened, and I did, and that's how I evolved. Big mistake many writers make: waiting and waiting until they become their very best before starting to write. Unless you're actively applying effort, you cannot possibly evolve. We evolve by practicing and participating. Don't let the fear of your material not being good or good enough hold you back into stalemate. Move left, move right, steam ahead, and so what if you get stuck or pushed backwards? It happens. It's natural. It's going to happen. Go with it and accept it. Take the bull by the horns and storm ahead fearlessly. Be daring and be brave. Experiment with your style, your tone, your ability to write simply and complexly. Choose your genre carefully. The worst advice I took in the beginning is getting your family or friends to read your work and get feedback. I don't come from an encouraging family, many of whom have not excelled far in life. Some can be malice, while others can be too kind, fearful of harming your feelings. So opinions from those who know you isn't likely to be balanced. Leave this for from independent professionals, an editor being your first port of call, then an agent. And remember, it speaks volumes when a person is taking the time to represent you. Then you'll know you're good enough. To be in the playground of the best. Read a lot. Read lots of different things. Study often. Study lots of different fields. If you're a thriller writer, for example, study topics that will arise in your material. Criminology, medicine, psychology, police tactics, law. Secret service or military tactics, aviation, mechanics, surveillance, digital hacking, methods of murder, forensics, methods of forensics cleanup, terrorism methods. There's such a plethora to learn, and the more you learn, the better writer you'll become. Put more thought and effort into your growth. Of as a writer than the momentum, that will all come in time when you build your skill set and your confidence.
At first, I take the time to get one book in tip-top condition before even thinking about what next book might be consist of. Now I have several books in development at once, even several screenplays. Once your brain is trained in a way to write and write often, one book will inspire another. Stemming keen ideas and innovation ideas, that's when momentum will come automatically and again naturally. It will all come in its own good time. To so start off learning to get into a flow, a routine. Gradually, you'll work your way up into the daily word count. Later, daily chapter count. My first publishing experience was a bit of a head funk, because I had people who wanted me to fail, comparing me to published authors like Stephen King, which didn't make sense at all, since he and I write totally different genres. And add into the equation, we're totally different generations. So I took this on as my energy and started comparing myself to other published authors too. Not a smart idea. What's not fair about this, from your personally, from your personal point of view, is you've read a book or numerous books, and what you're comparing is a finished product. It's been from one office to another and professionally edited. That material wouldn't have had its own collection of errors. Grammatically, even in a various structure or flow that might have needed adjusting. Therefore, nobody's work in progress can be honorably compared to a completed product. Think prototype. On top of which, you don't know how many drafts that author went through to get their work to the poly stage that you're reading. So comparing your first or second draft to a person's unknown and maybe tenth draft, add into the equation professional editors' eyes and potentially agents and publishers' advice and alterations to make that work more commercial. See how unfair that is, and unkind to you and your process of evolution. Tell a specific story. What I mean is, in my first novel, I made some errors. What I have gone on to correct. That mistake is something most debut novels make, or debut authors make. Sorry, <laughs> it's just trial and error, lessons learned, kind of situation, and this is a good thing, not a weakness at all. I wrote a story that had too many complexities in order to try and create suspense. I basically bit off more than I can chew from my first attempt, and because I was trying to create suspense, I allowed some parts to run too long, and others I didn't make long enough, like murder scenes that readers went on to tell me they would have enjoyed it to been a bit more detailed. How to fix this is to make your scenes similar and simpler until you develop your skills. When you have developed their, these skills, and they've been well exercised, move up a gear. Meaning, <clears throat> instead of one major twist, kind of like an Agatha Christie story or a Columbo or Murder She Wrote episode, implement two or three twists as your confidence grows, and your keen professional eye for the slightest error is trained. And be a compulsive editor, going over and over all of that structure and making sure that all of the lists are checked off in order to keep that structure coherent. Master both your writing skills, otherwise referred to as a craft, and your analytic thought process. Your style in conjunction with your flow and the overall plot. Don't get lost within the plot. Don't allow yourself to start thinking, "I can't complete this plot or scene because I'm not smart enough. I'm not skilled enough," and then you render yourself back at stalemate, which means no completion. Which means there's nothing in the market for people to know your name, to enjoy. Everything, every question, 
every conundrum, it has an answer. Just set your mind to sourcing it. Be it online, in a magazine article, a textbook, within a conversation you didn't think was going to spark off those creative juices. A podcast, whatever, all answers are right there. Go get it, finish your work, and make it happen. And in time, you'll need to learn processes aside of writing the book, like studying marketing, digital marketing, social media marketing, publishing an affairs process. But the earlier, the better. So I hope this has helped you start off your process and potentially your new year, knowing in what direction you need to go, making a list and checking it off. So until next time, I'll leave you to your homework. I'm Grace Vandenberg.